and Palestinian Affairs Analyst, Osama Nazal. He joins me live from the city of Jenin in the occupied West Bank. Osama, great to have you here with us on TRT World. Now, a few months ago, the ICJ did uh, release uh, emergency measures uh, urging, in fact, asking Israel to do certain things. And one of them was to ensure continued entry of humanitarian aid into the besieged enclave. But certainly, Israel has not implemented those measures because all of the border crossings remain blocked. There is no way aid can be brought into the territory. Now, the expectation today is that uh, the ICJ, again, is going to rule against Israel and uh, ask for an immediate ceasefire in Gaza. Well... Considering the fact Israel did not implement uh, previous uh, emergency measures issued by the ICJ, what's the point of issuing new measures? Uh, yeah, without any doubt that Israel is turning a blind eye to the international judicial system and to the international calls for a ceasefire and for ending the genocide campaign because Israel has used to act as a state above the law, supported by the United States administration and other uh, Western uh, countries, and uh, that is why it doesn't feel that there is any power that can deter it and stop it. But this doesn't mean that the action by the, ju the international judicial system, whether the ICJ or the ICC, is not important. It is very important, and it is strategic, because it shows the world the real face of the Israeli occupation, and at the same time, telling the Israeli occupation officials that it is no longer for you to commit your crimes and go unpunished. If you are having impunity today, this impunity will not last forever, and the world is changing. And once there is an opportunity for the international judicial system, the Israeli officials, Benjamin Netanyahu and his uh, cabinet, will be brought to the court and will face justice. Osama, now I want to talk about uh, the United States because it seems to me that uh, the U.S. and uh, some other allies of Israel have been actively reinforcing this uh, impunity that Israel enjoys uh, in Gaza and occupied uh, West Bank. Uh, let me ask you, to what extent do you think uh, responsibility can be attributed to countries like the U.S. So when it comes to Israel's, Israel's rejection of whatever the United Nations Security Council says, whatever the United Nations General Assembly says, and whatever the UN's top court says. You know that without the support by the American administration, Israel won't continue its genocidal campaign against the people in Gaza for one day more. But regrettably, the American administration is not giving its ear to the American public and to the American university students and the press Israel to stop. Today morning, I read in the Israeli newspaper, the Jerusalem Post, that the Congress speaker, Johnson, invited the Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu to deliver a speech in the American Congress. And this shows how the American administration and the American Congress is refusing to learn from history and be on the side of humanity and to be on the side of human rights and to oppress Israel to stop the mutilation of the bodies of the Palestinian children and women in Gaza. And at the same time shows that the American administration will never have an even-handed role in mediating peace in the Middle East as allowing Israel to take the whole area to the unknown. You know, what's happening in Gaza is genocide, and what's happening in the West Bank today is not less dangerous, really, as Israel is storming the Palestinian cities, killing doctors and teachers here in the West Bank. And today, just today, the Israeli army allowed the Israeli settlers to attack a Palestinian truck loaded with food stuff that was not on its way to Gaza. It was in, uh, on its way to the city of Ramallah, which is the seat of the Palestinian government. So we are seeing the whole situation is uh, getting more volatile, and the United States is still stuck to its position, uh, handling Israel as its uh, coddled uh, baby. 
Osama, rightly said, uh, the U.S. House Speaker Mike Johnson did say that uh, he is going to invite Benjamin Netanyahu to deliver a speech uh, as part of a joint uh, session of uh, the U.S. Congress. Now, we don't know whether or not uh, Benjamin Netanyahu has accepted his inv invitation and when exactly he's going to be traveling to Washington. Well, con assuming he does go up to the United States uh, and delivers his uh, speech, uh, what do you think uh, this goes to show about the role of Washington as a mediator when it comes to uh, bringing a ceasefire in Gaza. It is clear without even Netanyahu's visit to the Congress and delivering his speech, it is known that the American administration is 100% on the side of the Israeli occupation government. And we saw how they want Israel not to invade Rafah, but Israel invaded Rafah, and it is committing genocidal crimes in Rafah, and the American administration is doing nothing. So America is determined to continue to support Israel with money, to support Israel with military equipment, and at the same time allowing Israel to do whatever it wants in terms of uh, its colonial project in the occupied Palestinian territories and nothing but words without actions. So there is no space now to trust the American administration talking about peace and talking about the possibility of having a Palestinian state beside Israel. Really, the American administration failed the test and it is impossible to restore confidence by the people of the region. Osama Nazal, thanks very much for talking to us here on TRT World. Really appreciate your taking out the time.